quick explanation of 2751 robot collisions. Mm, so there are n one index robots each having a position on a line, health, and movement direction. You're given zero index integer arrays, positions, health, and a string directions um, that all represent uh, their respective things. And all positions, so all integers and positions are unique. So all positions, that starting positions are unique. And all robots start moving on the line simultaneously at the same speed in their given direction. So either left or right. If two robots ever share the same position while moving, they collide. If two robots collide, the robot with lower health is removed from the line. And the health of the other robot decreases by one. The surviving robot continues in the same direction it was going. If both robots have the same health, they are removed from the line. Your task is to determine the health of the robots that survived the collision in the same order that the robots were given. Final health of robot 1 if it survived, final health of robot 2 if it survived, and so on. If there are no survivors, return an empty array. Return an array containing the health of the remaining robots in the order they were given in the input after no further co uh, collisions can occur. So the positions may be unsorted. Um, so taking a look at our very first example. So we have, these are our positions. Do note that they aren't in order of, they aren't in order along the number line. Um, but nonetheless, they, so this, one on robot on index three is 10 HP um, and has a direction going right, okay? And looking at this example, what's going to happen is these two will crash, they will collide, and they will both break because they have the same HP. Uh, remember, if two robots collide and have the same health, they will are both removed from the line. And then after that happens, this uh, robot at number two and robot at number six will also collide um, and they and this robot number two at index two has more HP so it will continue along its way but its HP will decrease by one so we'll go to 14 HP so the answer will be just 14 and note the output is just the HP it's not like it doesn't need the direction of the robot it just the HP of the remaining robots so the first and taking a look at the constraints is pretty important as well. Um, we can see that all of the variables basically go up to 10 to the 5 in length. Um, so in other words, our algorithm will probably have to be will have to be within O of n, right? So if it's O of n squared, uh, that's too slow. O of n log n should work, but anything uh, slower than O of n log n would be too slow. Um, and then same thing here, the numbers go up to 10 to the 9, which is less than 2 to the 32. Uh, so we should be okay to just use 32-bit integers. So 32-bit ints is good. And then um, directions, either L or R, pretty straightforward. All values and positions are distinct. This actually makes the problem a little bit easier. So sort of the first thing we can kind of think about is a naive approach, right? Is to just simulate, um, simulate along our number line. So actually move every single robot physically. So have like a robot on, have a robot on three, have a robot on five, have a robot on two and six, all these indices and just move them based on the direction and watch all the collisions happen. However, um, the runtime of this will most likely end up, the, the runtime of such an algorithm would be O of n squared, because what we would ultimately have to do is, let's say our number line, uh, worst case, our number line is of uh, length 10 to the 9, right? So it's not just O of n squared. If we say, because these positions can go all the way up to 10 to the 9. If we simulate, we would have to have a number line of size 10 to the 9. And then if we had a bunch of robots, we would have to iterate through this number line a bunch of times. Or we would iterate through each robot a bunch of times. Because um, at each, each step or each time step, we would have to go to each robot and increment or decrement it. So we would have to um, go to each robot, so n, where there are n robots, number of robots, 
multiplied by the number of times we have to do this time step. In worst case, we would have to do this time step 10 to the nine times, right? Because each time step, the robot moves one time. Uh, or it would be 10 to the nine divided by two, right? But of course, that doesn't really make that much of a difference. So if m is equal to 10 to the nine, or m represents um, number of times time steps, which also represents um, a length of number line, then the runtime would be O of n times m. And this is way too big. Um, so we have to come up with a way to solve it in O of n instead. So our initial naive approach, although it works in theory for smaller input sizes, uh, doesn't work for everything. Um, so looking at this problem, the first thing to note is, is there like a specific order by which these robots will collide? Or what are the conditions for robots to collide? So for two robots to collide, two robots can be in four different states. State one, it's LR. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna arbitrarily say there are two robots. This L, this one, this one represents the direction of the left robot and this one re represents the direction of the right robot. So there are four different states they could be in. LR, LL, RR, and RL, right? So for any given two robots, we can instantly figure out, without having to do the simulation that we did previously, we can instantly figure out whether or not they collide. Um, they will not collide here, right? If the left one is moving left and the right one is moving right, they will not collide. Same thing here, LL, because they move in the same speed, will not collide, RR will not collide. But here is the only situation where they do collide. So we have to take a note of this one. And of course we have to pay attention to the order of which, how they collide. But if you take a look at this example, particularly, it becomes very clear that the order by which they collide is always based on the closer robots, right? So in this case, although robot one, the robot labeled one, so this label right here, robot one collides with robot four, based on our pairing, it won't necessarily in it won't necessarily actually collide in reality, right? Because it first collides with robot two. So we basically, in other words, we want to find the closest pairings that match RL for every single robot, right? Because the closest ones are the ones that will actually collide first, and then after they collide, we can compute from there. And if we take a note of that, all of a sudden, this problem becomes very, very similar to if you guys have ever done something like valid, valid parentheses or ensuring that the parentheses line up properly, we can just consider the right direction to be a left parentheses, an opening parentheses, so here and here, and the left direction to be a, an ending parentheses. And here, the reason why we can do something like this is we essentially want to break the parentheses that are closest together. We're not necessarily break, right? If the numbers, if the HPs are equal, then we, break, then we dissolve both of them. We dissolve both of these parentheses and we continue computing from here. If they're different, then there are slightly other computations that we would have to run, but they're still very straightforward. So essentially this problem can be broken down to just a parentheses problem, but with a slight twist. So right off the bat then, if we're looking at validating parentheses, the first thing we can think of is using a stack. Um, the, the whole point of using a stack is because of its LIFO structure, right? Last in, first out. Every time we put in an opening parentheses, 
the instant we th see a closing parenthesis, we can very quickly tell, okay, our most recent opening parenthesis was oh, at the top, is at the top of our stack. And then we can deal with them however we want to. So in this case, when we use a stack, we have some stack here. Ooh, I spelled that. So we have an opening parenthesis here. Open. Or I should label the robot, right? So robot three, robot one. And then we we look at robot two's direction. It's left. So it's a closing parenthesis. We look at, okay. Is this an open parenthesis? So we peek the top element of our stack. Um, and we see that it is. And then we see that they're both the same HP. So normally if it was, if two was like a opening parentheses, we would just put it up here. But instead we break both of them. We don't need either of them, right? So kind of looking at a quick, sim a quick demo of what this would look like. Let's say I'm just gonna represent each robot with a line. Let's say there's a robot going this way. So that way, we're going that way. Another robot going that way, another robot going that way. And finally a robot going this way, a robot going this way, and then a robot going that way, that way, that way, and that way, right? We're going to, for now, just ignore the HP part. We're gonna say every robot has the same HP. Um, so what would our stack behavior kind of look like? First of all, this is a closing parentheses, right? In the beginning. But because there are no, there's no, nothing in our stack right now, it doesn't close anything, right? So we instantly know, however, because this is the leftmost. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be, the first thing we're gonna wanna do actually is to sort this input array. So sort these positions and sort all the robots based on their position. Cause we want to go from left to right. We want two, three, five, and then six. So we're gonna first look at this one on the leftmost. And we notice as the leftmost one is moving to the left, which means it's not gonna to collide to anyone. We know that for sure. So we can actually just go ahead and add that to our answer list in the very beginning. So, so we add, um, I'm gonna just index everything like this for now. And then we have our answer. So we have zero in our answer. And then we're done looking at it. We don't need to add anything to our stack right now. But now we have this one. We move on to looking at this one right here. So now this one at one, we put it in our stack, right? Because it might collide with someone. Um, I'm actually going to move my stack down here. It might collide with someone. We move to two. So two, remember our condition right here, right? The only way for them to collide if, is if the right one moves left and the left one moves right. So when we observe two, this one's moving right, this one's moving right, we compare it to each other, they're not gonna collide. We add it. Same thing for here. We compare all, this one and this one. So we always compare the, the, the robots that are next to each other, remember, because we're always uh, we always want to compute the smallest distance ones first, the ones next to each other, the adjacent ones. So same thing here. We know they will not collide. But here, we know this one's going R based on, because we have the, in, we, we store the information in our stack as well. We store extra information, not only the number of the robot, but also its direction, and it's also its HP. Uh, but no HP for now. And here, our condition right here is finally met, right? R, L, we know they're gonna collide. If we know they're gonna collide and they're the same HP, we know they're gonna destroy each other. They're both gonna just not appear in the stack anymore. So we see that four done being computed. All it does is just remove three and it also itself doesn't get placed on. And so now we know these two have destroyed. Eventually the next closest one is now just the two. So if we see that the five is also moving left, we're going to, 
try putting it on, but then we're going to notice, oh, this is moving left. This is moving right. It fits our condition. Both of these get removed. And so we end up just with our one again. So now we have our one that's moving right, our six that's moving uh, right as well. Add six. They're not going to collide, right? And then seven, they are going to collide. Six and seven are going to collide. Eight, one and eight are going to collide, right? Because left, left. And so we end up with another um, right moving one over here. Um, see, if it was, if this, if this nine was moving left, we could also already just instantly add it to our list because at this stage, we've already paired, um, we've already paired everything up with its, with its parentheses, right? These are literally just parentheses. We could just represent it like this. That's basically what's happening. And because we see that this, uh, right one is moving right, we continue to compute, but if it was moving left, we would know that this it's now at the most leftmost position because this has already been computed. These have already all been computed. This is now the leftmost position. If, for example, this was going that way, we would just add it to our answer instantly. However, we have to add it to our stack instead. And then anything remaining at the end of our stack, because right, we're done computing here, there are no more indices. Anything remaining at the end of our stack also gets added to our answer. And that basically covers the entirety of the problem. It's just uh, validating parentheses. Of course, the slight twist is the HP part, but it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. All we do is do a slightly different stack operation rather than necessarily destroying both of the items in the stack. We, we could keep one or we could keep the other and keep its direction. Um, and, and everything else basically stays the same. So I'll let you guys figure out how to deal with uh, different HPs on your own. Uh, sort of analyzing time complexity here. Um, so all of this happens, all of the stack operations happen in um, O of N time because there are only, so every time we work with uh, each new item, so like let's say here there are 10 items, we're going to be, every item, worst case, we put it in the stack once and then we remove it once. So we're gonna be visiting every item worst case two times, right? And so ultimately the time complexity of that is just O of N. However, we do have to sort the array in the beginning. Um, if we just use uh, the standard um, sorting libraries, uh, that sort will happen, probably a merge sort. And then it would just be O of N log N. So all our worst case, um, so basically like the, uh, the, the limiting runtime part is the sorting. That's what will actually take the longest. So that'll be O of N log N and then space complexity is O of N because we have to create the auxiliary array as well as the auxiliary stack, both of which are at most size N. So yeah.